All right, welcome back. This is CSIS 1190. We're going to be carrying on with chapter 10. This is our last chapter in the, in this course. I'm sure that a lot of you will be very happy to hear that. And it's entitled Imports XML and the Power Add-ins. So what we're going to do in this core in this class today is we're going to look at how to bring in primarily external data from other sources, bring them in, connect them together, analyze, visualize the data. And that's really the focus of chapter 10. And the case study that we're going to be using is some stock analysis uh, information. I've used this theme uh, a bit. We're going to be looking at bringing in external sources like text files, bringing in databases from Access, and then visualizing that using power tools that come with Microsoft Excel. So to get started in this, you're going to have to download the, the working files and to do, do that in the Blackboard course, of course, is the link that is right in the course uh, outline, which is right here, the student files right there. And you get, of course, this link right here. You can click on that there and you can download your file. So what I've done is I've just gone in here and I've downloaded them. And to get started, let's just get our heads wrapped around what we're doing in this chapter. So this chapter will be bringing in uh, files into Microsoft Excel from different sources. So we have text files, we have XML files, we have Excel files, uh, CVS files, and access database files, as well as all sorts of other files. When you are working in a job, there are gonna be data sources from a variety of different places. And what this chapter is gonna teach you is to go in and be able to grab external data sets, bring them into Excel, um, massage the data, connect the data, and then be able to visualize or ask questions again of that data. So to get started here, um, what I'm going to be doing is showing you an example of this stock market stuff. And we've talked a little bit about this in previous examples, but I want to start off with this one right here. This is just a regular TXT file. Most people recognize a TXT file. If I double click it, it opens up in Notepad. You can see here that there's a broker ID. Now a broker is a salesperson that sells stocks. So this is the HR department, the human resource department, and they got one, two, three, four, five. They got a small brokerage company. They got five stock brokers and this is their name their address and where they live so this is the text file now I want to bring that data into Microsoft Excel and I want to massage it and make it look right and get the data cleaned up and whatnot and there's a variety of ways of doing this so uh, is there a right way and a wrong way well sometimes there's a little more efficient ways but there's multiple ways of doing this so to start with I'm going to show you how to do this by just simply selecting all the data copying it and pasting this. So I'm going to open up a brand new instance of Excel right here. And I'm going to go back into my my home tab and I'm simply going to paste in my text. And sure enough, it, it pastes in pretty well. Excel is pretty intelligent. When, when the data is in a somewhat organized format or in a table type format, Excel will interpret that and fill it in. But sometimes it's not perfect. So you can see here that the broker has a unique ID. This is like their employee ID or like your student ID. Everyone has a unique ID. There's only one of you. So they give you a unique number. You've got your name, your address, and this is a, a city state. But we want to break this data down and make it a little bit more useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there's a couple ways of doing this. We could type in um, the option here called Stanford right here. And then I want to pull all the Stanfords out of this area. So there's an option under editing called fill and we could do what they call a flash fill and what that does is it actually goes in here and it, it intelligently looks at the data and it grabs it and it fills it in but is it perfect no no nothing is ever really perfect here's another one connecticut is the state and florida is the next one i could type all this in but if there's a lot of data that's very problematic so this flash fill is actually kind of a neat thing you can see here it actually put in state here this would be the city and then finally, I want the zip code. All right, now the zip code is a little bit more unusual because I go 06907. That, uh, basically, I'm just typing in the first one here and I want to flash fill it down. So what I'm going to do here is go back into edit, click on file and flash fill and bam, it works. So you can see here how, how I could take the data from here and then extrapolate it into its own columns. That's one way of doing it. Now, another way of doing this, so I'm going to delete that, is to actually use a tool called a delimited or um, a fixed width um, data 
um, where we're going to, going to uh, extrapolate the data. So I want to basically pull the data apart. And this is very common. A lot of times I'll get data and I'll have to massage the data. So under the tab called data, under data tools, there's something here called the text to column. So I want to take the text and put them into columns. So there are two key ways of doing this. We can use it, what they call a delimiter, which means to, uh, de to separate the data to pull apart the data, to delimit the data using a character. So I can see here that each of these records has a comma. So I can use the comma to separate the, the cities. So to get started, <clears throat> all I do is I, I have to first of all, highlight all the data and then go into my to, um, text to column, click on next. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select what it is. It's actually a comma. And it, when I press comma here, ex Excel actually extrapolates it for me and it looks good. I just click on it and it pulls that data across. So now I can do the same thing here. So, but what is the delimiting character that separates the state from the zip code? Well, you can see there, there's a space there. So again, I highlight the data, go back to my data tools, select text to column. And I could actually use a fixed width as well. Fixed width because each of these are exactly the same number of characters. I could actually go across here and say, I, I, I want to split it right about here. Or actually I could just maybe move this over here and say finish and it would work as well. Now another way to do that would have been to go back and say let's just use a delimiter and a delimiter would be a space. I can see there's a space there so I can just say finish and it would do the same thing. Now the other problem is the zip codes are all messed up. You can see here if there's a zero it, it drops it out. So if I go back into my home tab under my numbers, I could expand my numbers and say, let's customize this field to have a general field that has one, two, three, four, five zeros. And when I click on that, it formats it nicely. So now I can simply go back in here and just do a little cleanup. And I can say, this is the state, this is the zip code, and this is the city. And I got my data pretty nice. So then I could just one more fix up and I'm ready to go. Now I could go in a little further and say, okay, I want to take all my data here and turn it into a table. So we've done this before going to table, set up a table. Yep. And that looks good. And I could even give it a name like broker and we should be good to go. Now I might want to actually even change the name here, go in here and call this a broker. Good. So what, we just did here was we took a text file for a txt and we brought it into excel and we created and manipulated it to the point where we've got the data now another way we could have done this is gone up into the data tab and actually imported from a text file you can do that from here or you can go into get data from a file and do it here a text or a comma separated value file that's a delimited comma separated value means a delimited is a comma separated with a comma and it's broken down into values. So that's another way we could have done it. But this method here just didn't work as well. So if I click on it and it, it says, okay, well, what file do I want to import? I'm going to go back into my downloads. I'm going to open up my folder here today and click on my brokers TXT file. And I say import. Now Excel tries its best to try to figure out how the data should look at this point, but it does a terrible job. So I could go in here and I could say, well, is there another, is it, is there a space in here or, you know, is it somehow, you know, try fooling around with these different ones here. This one's pretty good right here. Just using the tab delimiter and say load. And the tab delimiter pretty much does the same thing as just selecting, copy and paste. You can see here, it didn't actually extract the data here. I still have to do that. So it's, you know, one or half a dozen of the other. Um, you know, you can pick which method you want to use. Um, when you start using Excel and bringing data in from external sources, you sort of learn little tricks about how to do this more efficiently. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you. I'm going to take that one off for now. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is how do we get access to data that's in an outside database, like a, an Excel database. Now, just to show you how this looks, I'm gonna go up in here into this transaction. This is an ACCDB file, Access Database. This is a Microsoft file, it's not an Excel file, it's an Access file. And when I double click it and I open it up, it opens up Access right here and creates 
a basically like a, a spreadsheet, but it's a it's a database. Some of you might have looked at Access before, but this is what Access looks like. It looks a lot like Microsoft Excel in a way. It's it's a database, and it focuses on that. So it's got the transactions, the date. Now what you're looking at here is actually um, the, the, the brokers are selling stocks, bonds, certificates, that sort of thing. And these are the clients who have bought those. So this Baker, Eric Baker had bought a bond and they purchased it for this. The selling price was this. And the broker was this. We don't actually know the name of the broker, do we? In this table right here. All we know is their, their ID. Now we do have their, in the brokers list though, we do have their ID that was Jasmine that sold that. But in the database over here, we don't know who sold that amount. So we're really restricted about how we can, you know, ask questions. Like I can't, can't ask questions yet. Like which agents sold how much uh, bonds, you know, in a certain time period. These are really good questions to start asking, but we can't ask those questions because we haven't really formulated the data to get it to the point where we can ask those. It's not in one sheet. It's actually in multiple sheets. So what I want to do is I want to bring this data in. Now, can I select it all and just copy and paste it? Well, uh, that's actually possible, but I don't want to do that because it's, it's, it's messy. So I'm going to just close that down for a moment and I'm going to open up a uh, new sheet. I don't even need to open up a new sheet because I'm going to go back into data and this time I'm going to get data, but I'm not going to get data from a text file. I'm going to get data from a database. The database I want is Microsoft Access. Now, Microsoft Access or Excel can import data from a SQL, uh, SQL server, an SQL server. It has all these other types of data uh, systems that you can in import from. Azure has different databases that it has. Uh, you might have heard of Power Business Intelligence. Uh, there's online services like your SharePoint, your intranet from companies or your Salesforce. So there's, there's multiple ways of importing data. It's just, it, it's almost endless of what you can bring into Excel. Anything to do with data, we can bring it in. But in this example, I'm just going to simply show you an example of how we can bring data in from a, a, an access database. So I'll say, let's go in here and go access database. And today I'm going to do my transactions. I'm going to say import and it's connecting to the data. Now, what I want to point out here is that the data I'm bringing in here is going to be dynamic. So in the previous example of the brokers one, when I brought in a text file, it's static. It means the data is here. It's not going to change, but the data I'm bringing in now is dynamic. That means that if the transactions change, if someone adds more transactions to the database, it will update this one as well, which is very, very important. So transactions right here, and let's go in here. I'm going to just have a quick look to make sure all the fields are in here. So there's broker ID. Yeah, there's Jasmine's ID. There's the selling price, the purchase price. This looks just like that access table I just showed you. So now if I go back down into the bottom down here under load, it's going to put it onto a separate sheet and call it transaction. So I've got one here called my brokers. This is static. Nothing here is going to change because I just brought it as a text file, but transactions is actually dynamic. So it's very important to keep uh, track of. In fact, um, if you take a look at the transactions in here, let's just make a, make an example here. I'm going to actually open up the transaction database in Excel access, sorry. <laughs> and let's open this up. Let's take, um, we know this was Jasmine. We know this is Eric Baker, the client who bought a bond. And let's say that the selling price was just $128, okay? So I've made a change. So this is some other person in some other department making transactions. This is the transaction uh, department of this company. So they're making some kind of a change here. And I'm gonna click the save to make sure that that save is done. Okay, let's close that down and let's close this down. Let's go back to Excel. So let's go back into Eric's, Eric Baker's bond. It should be $128. I put in $120 in the access, but it's not here. But because this is a dynamically linked worksheet connected to an access database, I just hit refresh. It goes back to the database, grabs the information. And now you'll see here that it goes from a hundred or from $28 to $120. Now, just to, to emphasize that again, if I go back in here and, and I reverse the process, let's take that back out. I click on save in my access database and then I click my refresh that should go from 128 to $28 there it worked 
So it's showing you that it's actually dynamic. So the transactions are dynamic, but the brokers are not, which kind of makes sense because we don't hire a lot of people. I mean, that's a very rare thing we do. So we can just go in here and add a new, um, you know, a new broker. I could go in here and type in myself. That's Ryan Caldwell. It's a new broker, right? <laughs> and one, two, three, Howe Street. Oh, there you go. Howe Street's our, our stock market street here in Vancouver, uh, Vancouver, BC, and whatever. All right. Oh, and by the way, since I'm here, and if we wanted to fix this, like sometimes we don't want all capitals, we want to put those to the proper case. We can use a function here called proper. And if I go proper and I click on the name of somebody, it puts it into a proper capitalization. But it, this is a formula. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply copy this. So I'm going to go back up here and say copy all this. And then I'm going to paste it back over top of all of this, but paste it as simply as a value. There, I'm done. So that's kind of a cool little trick there. And that's to help clean up the data. Forgot to clean up the data there. All right. So that is giving me um, my static brokers and I'm getting my dynamic transactions. Now, Ryan hasn't been entered in here, so I haven't entered any of this in, but I could type in like, um, if I go back into my access database and I make some changes here, let's say that one, two, three, four, and I go down here and I just say, maybe I put myself in as a few of these here, right? Just to see if I can add some data. There we go. Don't forget to save it and close. All right, so just to see if that worked, I'm gonna go back into my uh, data and I'm gonna select my refresh. So my refresh, I can hit refresh here. That one is another refresh right there. And these should all turn to 111. There, perfect, it worked. So now I'm, I've added myself as a, a broker now. All right, so that is um, kind of explaining how we can bring in different types of data. Now, there is a lot of different data. The book goes through another one called XML. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how XML works here next. All right, in the book, XML, it's an extensible markup language. It's a language used to transmit data uh, use over the web. A lot of websites that have data use XML formats to uh, display and organize their data. So if this is a very uh, good thing for every student to understand what XML data is, that extensible markup language. So whenever you're dealing with data on the internet, you pass data tends to, to go in an XML format. What does it look like behind the scenes? It kind of looks a little bit like HTML, where you have an opening kind of tag and a closing tag that encapsulates a bunch of data. So you can almost think of this as the uh, table, this is the field, and this is the data itself, three. All right, so there's the table, the field, and the data. Now, to give you a more ex uh, elaborate example of this, let's go back in and we'll have a look at some of the data that's in here. So I don't, I have, I have one here called contacts. And if I double click on it, XML files are regular um, text files. All right, so let's go here and I'm gonna go back into, this is my, trying to find the right one. All right, found it. All right, so here's here's a larger example there. So there's the the table account. Uh, then within account, there's a field called the account, probably number. Then there's the first name of the person, the last name, and then the type. And that's the end of this account record. So the next uh, table, we have another record, and here's the data. So we have a, again the table, and the field and the data itself. And this is a, a perfect example, and it goes on and on and on. The reason that they do this is so they can transmit this data over the internet quite quickly, and then the XML uh, is then formatted into a particular format, into a grid or a table, uh, once it's, it arrives at the browser. So that's why data is organized like this. All right, so that's a, a sample of that. Um, another one here, let's go back into another XML. So here's one called books to kill a mockingbird. Okay, that's not really what I want. I'm gonna open this up, I think, in my editor and it's not gonna work. It keeps defaulting to my, my browser. 
So I can tell that you can see here that this is symbol is connected to a text editor. This is not. So what I can do actually is I can go back here and say I want to open it with a the edit um, X, the um, text at the notepad program. OK, so here's another example of some data and you can see here in my books, I've got a table called books and I got a field in there called t uh, title and then I've got to kill a mockingbird. There's the author. There's the author's last name that when it was copyright and the international book number right there. And then the next record and so on and so on. Right. It just keeps adding it up. So these are examples. So to see how this works or how do you bring in a um, how do you bring in an XML data? So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to say let's associate the XML with Notepad and always remind me my computer. So what should happen now is you can see here I get Notepads now associated with my XML books. So if I click on my contacts, it automatically pops up in the Notepad. A little tip there for you guys. All right, but let's go into Excel and do this. So if we go into Excel, I want to bring in an XML file. I'm going to go to a new sheet here, go into my data tab, and let's go into my get data. Do I want to get data from another workbook? No, we've done lots of those throughout the course. I just showed you an example of how to bring in some brokers as a text from a text file. Now we're going to get it from an XML file. So when I select that, it brings up a list of all the XML files inside of our folder here. And for this example, we can pick any one we want. I'm going to pick contacts and I'm going to say import. And what the computer is going to do is it creates a schema to help um, lay out the data. And this is what it looks like. So that XML file that we looked at earlier, it will actually format it to look like this. And if I click on load, it takes the XML file and it will connect it. And that is also dynamically connected. You can see up here, this link right here is it's currently linked. If I don't want it linked, I can always select that and I can permanently remove the, from the query in the sheet so I don't have that link anymore. So I, if I want it back, I'd have to, you know, re-import this, but I'm not going to do that. All right, so that's another way of bringing in some more data. Now, there is another way to bring in data, and that's dynamic data through a web page, for example. So what you can do is if you ever find data on a website that you want to bring in, uh, you know, consistently. So I've got some data here. I think I put it under, where did I put it? Oh, I must not have. So let's go into something called the NASDAQ index. There we go and we can go to a regular web page so this is kind of showing you a combination between importing xml data by dynamic data from an html web page so this is the nasdaq market active composite index and they've got key indicators that i might want to use in my in my worksheet system maybe i want a trigger to know you know is the market going up or down uh, maybe I want to know what the bond prices are, the currency prices, what have you. And I can actually go in and find um, data that's dynamic. So this is a third party outside source that I'm going to bring into my spreadsheet. So to do this, I'm going to go up into data. I'm going to go back into get data. Now this time, I'm not going to go into a database or Azure, but I'm going to go from other sources. Specifically, I'm just going to go out onto the internet, onto the web. When I do that, Excel comes up with a dialog box. It says, okay, well, what's the universal resource locator that you're trying to connect to? Well, I want the NASDAQ right here. Once I click on okay, the computer goes out and it scans the site and then it, it organizes if there's any XML data tables that are, that have fields and they have data in them. And if they do, it, it, it publishes those inside of this uh, list here. Okay, well, the, the NASDAQ one's not working for some reason, so I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to try another one just to give you an example of how this would work. So let's go back into the web. And from here, I'm going to go into something here called the um, 4X exchange for currency conversion because maybe we're buying, brokers are buying uh, bonds and stuff in different currencies and they may want that. So once I, I click on it, it looks like it found the page. It's scanning this page. 
and hopefully it will find the tables within the page. Now I should have showed that page to you and it looks like this. So it's scanning this page. There's this the web page. I just copy the, the URL from here and this is the data that I want is right here. I want to know what the Canadian, the British pound are, or specifically the Canadian dollar. How much is the Canadian dollar? Because that's our currency. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. And it is just not working here. So I might have to go to another one or it could be my internet connection here. All right, let's try this one. So I'm going to go a little deeper into the Forex exchange. And here's a table right here. And I want to see if I can grab that table and bring it into Excel. So again, I'm going to give this one more try here. All right, and I'm going to paste in that URL. Waiting for the 4X. Looks like that connected. It's, uh, please wait. This does take a, a few minutes because it has to connect. There it is right there. All right, so what it did is on that page, it found four separate tables. So it's telling me that the currency and the cur the interest rate. Now, this is really interesting. Japan actually has a negative interest rate, which is hard to understand. But so can the U.S. is 0.25. Canada is 0.25. Those are the interest rates. Uh, here's one called document and then live currency rates. Ah, there. This is the one I want. But I only want a couple of these. So this is what I want. So I'm going to say let's load that. And it grabs this data. This and it converts that XML data and it builds external data in here. And there it is. There's the, um, so I could actually have live currency data. Now this is actually live. And if I hit refresh, um, currency can actually, you can, can change. Now there is another way of, of getting currency data. If you go back into your, um, let's see, into data and just see right here, currency right there. So if you want, you can just type in which pairing you want, and then you can um, get that. So you can go USD to um, USD to the C and D, I believe, and just click on currency conversion. And it, it probably or might look it up. Did I, maybe I've got to spell it with a, an A. There it is right there. So what I can do is I can get the current price and there and there's a match right there. So that's we know that the data is pretty accurate. I'm going to give it a couple more decimal places. Now, you can see that there's a slight variation between this one and this one. And, and that could have something to do with uh, it says here a disclaimer. Financial market information is provided as is and it's not for professional or trading purposes. Or advice because there is discrepancies so I got this data live from the XE or Forex exchange and this is from the Microsoft so there's a subtle difference it's one pip off that price index point of six to seven so it's not perfect um, so that's why they put this disclaimer up here so they you can't hold them accountable because when you deal with lots of money that that could uh, have a huge impact um, and if you were arbitraging between two separate um, markets, you'd want you could actually make money off this, which it, actually in reality you can't really do that because uh, otherwise everybody would just be buying uh, currency at this exchange for the less and then sell it for this one and make the difference and just do that all day long and make money. But it, that's not how it works. But anyway, that's kind of getting off this off the topic here. So my point here um, so far is to show you guys that you can bring data in from multiple sources and there are a lot in here. So when you guys are working, you can have, you're going to have access to probably sales data. Maybe you're working with Salesforce um, or Dy the Microsoft um, ERP system, that enterprise resource program that D Microsoft Dynamics 365. Wherever you guys work, you're going to be collecting data. And whenever there's data, you'll want to be able to ask questions. And whenever you want to ask questions, you've got to put the data in the right format so that you can organize the data. So that's going to lead me to the next um, topic in this chapter, which is having a look at the Power View add-in. So I want to look at Power Pivot or Power um, the Power Pivot add-in. So to get the Power Pivot add-in, you can do that in a couple of ways. If you've got the Developer tab, you can click on the Com, and you can simply click on the Microsoft Power Pivots. 
and put them in, or in this case, I took them out. The other way to do it, which you guys probably don't have the developer tab selected, uh, is you can go into File, down here to More, Options, click on Add-ins, go into this one here. You've probably been here before. Click on Com, go to Go, and now we can select the, the add-ins. Now, the Power Map, the Power Pivot, and the Power View. So we're going to focus on the Power Pivot uh, today, and uh, the book goes a little further and talks a little bit more about the power view. The simulation also talks about the power view. I won't be doing that here because there is a um, a restriction with the silver um, light add-in on our computers. Now, a lot of students have been asking me about that. But when I click on it, I get this power pivot right here. Now, the book also does talk about how to add more, you know, features, advanced features. And we've looked at this, how to customize this toolbar up here. And I've already done this. I've had the power view up here. But what we can do is go into more commands and we can go into, um, let's just go into, um, I'm going to go down here. Now that I've added it, I can say, I want to go to my power pivot. And you can see there's all sorts of stuff here. But the one I want is insert a power pivot view report. And I'm going to put that in my, my toolbar. So I'm up here. I could remove it, but you guys have to add it and say, okay, that adds it up here. And just so you know that the, the uh, for security reasons, they've disabled it because this is an older tool that they've retired now, just in recently. So um, I just want to make you aware of this, uh, that you won't be able to add this more most likely you won't be able to add this you can try if you can on your computer that's great um, but it's not going to work on mine all right so what i want to do now is i want to take a look at what is power pivot now power pivot is a a third um it's like a it's like an add-on that's why they call it an add-on to do business intelligence so in the book you guys are reading it does talk about the um, power, um, okay, that's the XML. Let's move on to the next section here. Adding in, okay, so we're taking a look at this power, uh, these power tools, add-ons. This is what they refer to as the business intelligence. You guys will probably hear this, business intelligence, BI, a lot. This is really where Microsoft Excel um, goes into a completely different realm. And we actually have courses on this. A lot of times you'll hear data analytics. And when you hear data analytics, we're talking sometimes about business intelligence, looking at how to visualize data. And Microsoft has a tool called the Power BI Desktop. And this is free for you guys. You guys can actually go in here and open this up. And this is it right here. And you can download this for free. And this is a tool that supersedes this power view so power view is kind of the original tool that came with excel and now they've microsoft has created a power business intelligence tool so some of you might even be taking this course there's an, a complete course dedicated to this one tool so it's like taking excel 1190 and supercharging it so we have a course in CSIS called um, excel sorry it's called uh, business support systems uh, 3190 and it's really focusing on power bi it's how do, how do you take data sets from multiple sources bring them together you can actually even see here there's an sql server right here you can get data there's the get the data so you get text files microsoft excel files outside source files you can enter your own data or there's a variety of different ones you can bring them all together and look at the data in a very different way you can see here you can look at data on a on a map with bubble graphs i mean it's it's just an incredible tool i use this myself um so one of my um roles at douglas is to uh deal with curriculum development at the college and the data analytics behind that so i've produced this tool using power bi and it's a dashboard that allows faculty to query the data for uh, courses and curriculum that they need to um, update and fix. So what this is, is just all the different courses at Douglas College and when they were last updated and when they need to be updated again. So it tells me right here, I can just select on a particular, this is all interactive and all dynamic. So I can just give a website, I post this on a website. So I just, for fun, I just did it at ryan.com because I, I own this domain and I just created this for fun. 
and uh, faculty can simply just go in here and say well I want just uh, CBA faculty and I want to look at all the different courses for CBA so there's 60, uh, 57 courses currently in the process of being reviewed for updating their curriculum so these this is just a, a sample of how we can use a, a power intelligent tool uh, in a real setting and this is a real tool and people actually use that tool all right so let's move back to um, Excel and let's have a, have a look at this power pivot now power pivot does have some nice features and it's it does teach have a teachable moment here so what I'm going to do here is, is show you that when you have added power pivot what we're going to do is look at what they call manage our data so when I click on this tool here it opens up a third-party software tool this is kind of like the old-fashioned Microsoft Power BI they call it power pivot and it's good for you to be aware of it so what this does is allows us to bring data into this system here so there's Excel is one system and the power pivot is another system once it's in the system we can then join together multiple data sets so for example I have I've got two real data sets that I want to work with I'm gonna just talk about these and these other ones here I'm just gonna get rid of so they're not confusing so I'm gonna get rid of all those and let's just uh, delete those delete perfect so I've got brokers those are my my people my salespeople and this is the transactions that they actually worked on what I want to do is I want to ask a question that says how how much how did uh, an individual broker so let's say Ryan or a Jack sell uh, during certain times of, of the, the, in, during this period so these are individual transaction numbers and this is the date it was sold the cl the customer what they bought what the purchase price was what they sold it for as so you can see here that they they made a bit of a profit and who the agent was but I don't know who the agent is I have I mean I have to go look them up I have to keep going back and forth back and forth between those two so what I want to do is I want to join these two sheets together in what they refer to as a relationship we want to create a relationship but remember like any good relationship you need to have a common bond so what's the common bond between the transactions and the brokers well the brokers has a, a field here called the broker ID and the transaction has something here called broker ID the difference is brokers there's only one broker and one record the transaction is that you can have one broker but have many in, um, transactions all right keep that in mind because that's going to be important later all right so now what I want to do is I'm going to take my brokers and I want to add this brokers to my what they refer to as a data model so when I click on add to the data model it's going to give me an error message here okay so let me just see if I can get over that all right I had to fool around with this a little bit and part of the problem was I had opened up the power view and it was it had crashed so I had to uh, reset that and the other thing was I had to take the table here and put it back into um, into a regular uh, table so this you can see here this is in a table table design and I had to convert it back into the range there we go so now I've got a broker here of data and I've got a transactional data um, so if I go back to my broker data and I go back to a1 I can go back into my power pivot and I can say let's add this data to my my model and it's going to take the entire table including my headings and I'm, it's going to add this so it opens up the power view there it is and it formats it there we go and let's see here data model change select the workbook to get these changes okay and it's turned off both of those are okay I'm gonna shut those off good now under the transaction I'm gonna do the same thing go back to a1 go back up into my um, well I can't go to data too because under under outline um, let's see under is it what uh, data tools there it is there's also the data manager here option right there and so there's multiple ways of getting access to that right I could go back into here and I can select that data model there and I want to add this one as well so I'm adding two both of these to my data model all right so there we go we got both of these entered in so what 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 happened is I've added in my um, 
my first table, that's my brokers, you can see that down here, table one, and table two, I've entered in as my transactions. Kind of like Excel, so keep that in mind. The Power Pivot is a separate program from Excel, but they work together. Now, now that I've done that, what I wanna do is create this relationship I talked about. So now if I go back in here under the Home tab in this group here called View, I can create what they call a diagram view. And a diagram view is basically just showing me the fields of each of those tables. So if you remember this one here, I'm gonna just name it. This is the uh, the broker. And this one over here, let me double click that. That's the uh, transactions. Is I've got one broker for multiple possible multiple transactions. But what I wanna do is I wanna create a relation. I wanna bring these two together. So like if you want anything to come together, we need to have a common bond. So what's common again? The broker ID. So I have a broker ID on this one and I have a broker ID so I can join the two together by simply grabbing this, dragging and connecting it to the broker ID. And what that does is it creates a relationship and the relationship that there's a one to many. Of course, like all relationships, it's never equal. Um, but you can see here that this there's one broker, but in this one here, there's many transactions that can occur. So they call that a one-to-many relationship between those two data tables. All right, now, once we've got that relationship set up, we can start asking new questions. I can start asking questions that have to do with, um, you know, an individual broker's name over here is sold how many transactions because this is acting as one complete unit now. Now remember, the transactions is connected to the access database. This is a static table, but we can put them together in a what they refer to as a pivot table. Now you guys have done pivot tables, so this won't be that difficult. So if I go to uh, the pivot table with inside of the Power Pivot tools, click on Power Pivot. Auto is turned off. Okay, I can turn that off. Oh, won't let me until I answer this question. Let's put it on a brand new sheet. Just like we have a pivot table before, we can do this um, again. And just so that this looks a little, I'm gonna format this a little bit. Let's see if I can get this to work. There we go. Um, I want to organize information or I want to um, combine, now that these two have created a relationship, they're, they're tied together with that common bond theme, I can actually create a pivot table using both of these because there's a relationship between these. All right, so this is a relational, a relational diagram or a relational database is what we're, we're doing here. So to start off with, I'm gonna go into the brokers and I wanna get the broker's name. Now, where do I wanna put the broker's name? Maybe across the top or I can put it along the bottom. Remember, it's, it's really up to you. So as, as I drop it here, here's all of the broker. Those are all the broker's names. There's mine. Remember, we added my name to that list. And now that's under the brokers. Now the transactions, what I want to know about the transactions is do I want to know the, the customer's first names or last names or the, maybe what commodities I sold. That might be kind of interesting to know. I could say commodities and put those down here because there's three commodities, bonds, the uh, convertible debentures, and and stocks. Now, if I want that, then I can also say, well, what do I want um, to calculate or to display? I want the selling price. I can bring the selling price down to value, and that would come up with a, a table of all the data. That's pretty neat because what we've got is two separate tables from two different sources of data joined together in a relationship displayed in a pivot table. Now, we could take it a little bit further and we could say, well, let's do, um, we could all also, we could also sort this by the date. We could, we could filter by date. So I could ask questions now based on date. So do I want it on a particular day? I got multiple selections here. I could go from, you know, from here, you know, all the way down here and it would just show me those dates. All right. Or I could just go back to all. I mean, I think I could even go back into my data and create a or insert a a slicer that was based on date i think that might work maybe too many yeah it might be too many but because i can i can select these but that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense so let's pick something else let's maybe let's do it on let's do a slicer insert 
a slicer based on um, maybe the broker ID even. Okay, so I got the bro these are all the broker IDs. Okay, so I, if I want, I want to find out what Ryan did. I, I know I'm that one right there. And sure enough, that's what I've done. Okay, there is Julius, Jack, and so on. Jasmine, Christine. Okay, and then those are all the brokers. We can add a little dynamic tool to that list as well. All right, so hopefully this g gave you guys a, an idea. I don't want to spend too much more time than that um, in this particular um, class. Um, I could have gone over this stuff pretty quickly. You guys can go back, watch it again, pause and whatnot. But um, I hope that made sense. And if we have a look at the, the book, um, you know, we, we've really had a look at how to import data from external sources. Like how do you import text files? How do you import a database? Um, and how to even connect to other outside sources, web external sources like, um, you know, um, the NASDAQ or currencies or whatnot. Um, how, how do you manipulate text data? Um, you know, text to column, I think we went over that as well. Something I didn't explain was um, a formula here, how to join together two text files, um, two text fields, which is a one, or how to substitute. I'll let you guys have a look at that. We did spend, I did show you how to do the flash fill feature and how to, to manipulate um, text, text manipulation of how to take a text and put it into the columns. We did spend some time talking about XML and how the syntax works, how you can import XML data. And we looked at a little bit about the power pivot function and the power BI. So the only thing I didn't do is the power view. And I think I'm going to need you guys to go in and do that during the, in the simulation because the power view um, doesn't work on the, the um, I think they retired it in 2019 or the end of 2020, I think is when they officially retired it, but it, it's no longer available. Uh, they've replaced it with the power BI. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the chapter number 10, which wraps up the course and th it wraps up all of the lectures. So this is it. This is the last one for this course. I hope you guys learned lots of stuff and you'll continue to learn more stuff. I do encourage you to have a look and continue your um, education in Linda uh, or LinkedIn learning, I should say. Because as a Douglas College student, you guys have access to a LinkedIn Learning. I'll just, uh, you guys have probably been in here lots or checked it out. And there are, I've, I've, I've got some recommendations that I've been posting up most weeks in this course. But if you guys want, you can do a course on um, Power Pivot. And you can learn a little bit about that. There's a 25 minute on power pivot for beginners. And I will recommend this one. You guys can so data. Is All right. It's only 25 minutes and it gives you another perspective of how to access your source data, how to create and manage data relationships. How, there's a good one. We just talked about this. They go a little further and talk about how to do calculated fields or additional information. For example, um, taking stock data and extrapolating it, making your own calculations creating measures and then there's a little quiz on that as well. They also talk about known performance indicators, which is a good uh, concept, good, good term to know about. And they go into the, the charts as well. All right. So for 25 minutes uh, extra, this is very uh, worthwhile doing. It looks, and when you finish it, it'll, it'll show up on your LinkedIn profile. Anyways, I'm talking too much. Um, this is, uh, this is it. And, uh, I'll let you guys finish off the course materials. If you guys have any questions, you can see me during my office hour or always you can send me a, an email. All right. See you guys online.